Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Woking, and I'm back for another Fake Grand Order video. Today, to talk about, uh, there's a new banner up that was not on the GP version of the game. So I'm gonna be talking about that. What the fuck? Well, everyone was kind of waiting for NeroFest to get announced, and then there's another subset of people who are waiting for Summer 3 to be announced, and then there's another subset of people who are expecting Hunting Quest to be released. Uh, or Challenge- no, Hunting Quest? Yeah, that's what they're called. Anyway. None of that released today. <laughs> Instead, they released a Part 2 Chapter 6 Conclusion Commemorative Pickup Summon, something that was not released on the JP version of the game, because if you remember, I did an entire video where I talked about, oh yeah, here's some banners. And then funny enough, someone in the comments of that one said like, hey, what about the stuff we don't know? It's like, I don't know how to prepare for unknown unknowns. Here's the unknown unknown. So this can be today's video as we go over it. Chances are, if you're seeing this, chances you've pulled uh, for Maeve, because I think she's gonna be, yeah, she's up here now. But the others aren't pulled yet, so let's go over the banner. Let's do it. Okay, so this is a banner. It is part two, chapter six, conclusion, commemorative pickup summon. It features Merlin, Karen, Queen Maeve, Tristan, and Gawain. Now, the way that the banner breaks down is that I believe these two are always going to be featured on, on feature on it, and they're both also story lock units, which are like limited but with extra steps. And all these three are no Merlin is limited, Karen is limited, and Queen Maeve is story locked, I believe. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, I'll check pretty soon because I have their stuff looked up. Ye the the long and short because I'm not going to be going over <laughs> Wayne and Tristan, but I think both of them are pretty solid units and they're nice to have because they're story locked. So, you know, always good to go. If you get them, I would be happy to have them just because they're extremely hard to get and that gives you access to any future interludes or um, strengthenings that they may get, which is just free quartz and free story. And that's always a good thing in my book. That's the <laughs> that's the thing where I get certain units simply for that sometimes. But anyway, this is how the banner breaks down today and the 25th, which is right now. And until the 27th, Queen Maeve will have her banner. And then starting on the 26th, going on until the 29th, that's when Karen's banner starts. And going from the 28th, starting on the 28th and going till the 31st, that's when you can get Merlin. Uh, let me see, is there any specific CEs that I can see here? Nope, doesn't look like it. So with that, I'll now go to the actual wiki side, boom, where they have it in there, and I'll do it by order of release. So let's start with Queen Maeve, who is currently up right now. She is story locked, boom. Uh, she is a writer. Um, she is one quick, two arts, two buster. Her active skills, which I will do in all the strength and versions, are Queen Substance A+, Grant Self Debuff Immunity for three turns, Recover Zone HP every turn for three turns, Charges on MP Gauge by 10% every turn for three turns, Charges the MP Gauge of male or fey allies, and the HP regen is 1000, and the male or fey MP charge is 30%. Her second skill, Discipline of the Queen A. Discipline of the Queen A is increasing the party's attack for three turns, increases the attack of male allies for three turns, and recovers own HP. 20% attack, 20% attack to males, and 2,000 heal. Third skill is My Red Mead. Uh, my Red Mead, My Dear Honey Alcohol. Sure. Chance to charm one male enemy for one turn, reduces the enemy's defense for one turn. 80% charm chance and 30% defense down. And that is a cooldown of 7 for skill 3, 5 for skill 2, and first skill is 6 turn cooldown. Um, her passive skill is Magic Resistance B and Writing A. Her third append skill is an increase on attack against Lancer enemies. And her Noble Phantasm is a Buster. Chariot My Love, My Dear Iron Chariot, deals damage to one enemy, deals extra damage to male enemies, and then reduces their me mental debuff resistance for 3 turns. And the mental rebu debuffs are... Things like sleep, charm, anything that is mentally wearing to a person, stun, terrify, terror, eternal sleep, which is funny that sleep and eternal sleep are two separate things. But at charge level 1, it's 150% bonus attack and debuff resistance down 20%. And if you get it all the way to the final charge level, it's 200% bonus against males and 60% debuff resistance. So, uh, Queen Maeve, I think she's had maybe the most one of the most interesting rides for a servant simply because when she released she just wasn't very good uh to be fair a lot of units that kind of released early on that had like charm as one of their things like if you look at her base skills and what she did back in the day 
just, you know, nothing. 80% attack up on a second skill, charm at an 80% chance, and a first skill that only charges MP gauge by 10% for every turn for three turns, that's bad. That's actively bad. And this dealt damage, and it's like, okay, nothing else, really. And to be fair, that's all it does now, except for now it's 800%, so it does a little bit more damage. But I think she's really good now, um, and she's actually usable. She's usable on a lot of interesting teams. Like, you could easily go male route if you just want to do a... <laughs> it's funny because she can either be extremely anti-male with her NP right here, which deals a lot of damage if the, the person you're fighting is considered male. And you can also do a thing where you can have a team of males and have her buff them by giving them attack and then also giving them an MP <laughs> gauge charge at the same time. I think she ends up being a much more interesting unit this way, and she ends up being a better unit. So definitely someone to, uh, to pick up if you're looking for them. I forget, I think I have her, I don't, I've always, I don't remember how I get her. Either I picked her at some point with a ticket, if Quetzalcoatl wasn't, wasn't an option, that's chances are how I got her, or I just randomly got her at some point, I don't remember, but I enjoy using her from time to time as a single target rider, and because she is Buster, if you have uh, Tomomovich, and you have um, Oberon, well congratulations, that's such like a cheat code for Buster units. Not to say that she would be the 100% best choice for it. I think she would get this because I think she's considered... F is she actually Fae in one of her traits? I actually was looking to see if she was considered a Fae. <laughs> Let me see. Who are you? What is considered a Fae ally, actually? Okay, she's not on it. Okay, so she doesn't buff herself with that. So that's kind of a bummer. But, you know... Single target attack, beat up man. You could definitely find ways to use her. She's still pretty solid, I'd say. That's Queen Maeve, and she also ends up being a strange... <laughs> Maybe it feels like this on the NA side, but she definitely feels like a fan favorite for a lot of uh, NA dudes that I have uh, play with, and they've talked about her, and I've seen her talk, and she's talked positively, which I feel like I never saw that on the JP side, but I'm sure she also has big fans on the JP side. One of them being Nasu, who apparently considers her, her f his favorite character, I think. I remember reading that somewhere on the internet. It has to be true. Next, let's go on to Karen. Uh, Karen is a ruler. She's two quick, two arts, one buster. Her first skill is the Holy Shroud of St. Valentine A. Grants uh, self-invincibility for three attacks, three turns. Grants self-regeneration buff for three turns. Absorb party's MP gauge by 20% except for self every turn. The amount of MP drain on the, allied, uh, on the ally is equal to the amount of MP charge of the skill use. Grants party invincibility for one attack three turns except for self. Increases party's MP generation rate for three turns except self 20% at level 10 on a cooldown of 6. Second skill is the Golden Arrow A. 500% chance to draw attention to all enemies to self by 300% for one turn. Charges on MP gauge. Reduces all enemies MP gauge by one. Reduces their attack for three turns. MP gauge is 30% up. 20% attack. 20% defense. Minus 20% attack. Minus 20% defense. And 7 t a turn cooldown at level 10. Her third skill is Mana Burst Love A, increases own quick performance for three turns, arts and buster for three turns, and then charges own NP gauge, and then I think lowers NP gauge as well at the same time for the opponent maybe one time. Quick arts and buster is all 20%, the MP gauge up is 20%, and the cooldown is of 6, so both of these are 1 is 7 and 1 is 6. Her passive skills are Item Construction A, Independent Action A, and Masochistic Spiritualistic Disposition EX, God Assessance B, Iron Will of Faith. And then her third skill is a Anti-Archer Attack Damage Aptitude, which is an increased attack against Archer enemies. And her rank EX Noble Phantasm is the greatest hits Colin Agape, Universal Free Infinite Love. Uh, five hits, deal damage to all enemies, deals 150% extra damage to enemies with the Chaotic Alignment, reduces their quick resistance for 20% for three turns, inflict buff block status for one time three turns to them, and this is when it's been buffed. Before the buff, it does not have this bonus, deal 100% extra damage to enemy cha uh, with the, cha uh, of the Chaotic Alignment. So when does the when does their first strengthening release for us, actually? was released in Valentine's 2022, so it's not coming until then. So for a while, you're going to be with this one. So something to keep in mind. Um, and yeah, the overcharge effect on this one is... Increases own MP damage for one turn. 
it is 10% at level 1 and all the way at the final level it is 30% and then it's the same even when it is buffed eventually. Okay, Karen. Uh, she actually has a lot of the things I usually complain a lot about. When it comes to quick servants, obviously the best quick AoE servant is always going to be Delman. At least for the foreseeable future. So what you can try and do best when it comes to quick is that you need either a way to get a lot of NP gauge and get a lot of um, NP generation. And she actually has both of those. <laughs> she has NP generation rate up, but which is 20%, except for it doesn't go to her, so she doesn't get this. So in theory, you want to get it from the party, but I don't know how much of this you're actually getting because unfortunately, Scotty, as she is now, which is the only way you could do it in NA, is 50% to one ally, so it would be her. So her second and first skill, yeah, I don't know about this one. Mm, the only reason I'm not 100% sure on the actual... Because obviously you want a loop of her. I'm not 100% on what she does because I don't have her. I know that rulers typically suffer from not being able to do a whole lot of damage, which is usually their downfall in a lot of cases. Um, so that's something to kind of look around with. I feel like you, with the way her kit's, kit's built and with the way it eventually becomes, you'll be able to kind of work around that with the extra damage when it gets strengthening. When it gets so strengthened and if you're fighting chaotic enemies then you'll be able to do plenty of damage and once you do a bunch of damage on the first hit, all the extra hit which is over damage, you get a lot more NP gain from that so that will be very helpful. Five hits is actually pretty decent for, for quick I would say. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know very much about Karen. I do know that Karen is liked by a lot of people and I've seen plenty of people saying I was waiting for Karen to return. So... <laughs> For you out there, I wish you guys the very best of luck with Karen. I There's a part of me that wishes I kind of have Karen because I think she's a really funny character. Uh, but I'm not super big into quick stuff at the moment. Really more into Hearts or Buster. It's very unfortunate to be a quick unit kind of coming up. There's still ways to use them, obviously, and there's going to be some future support units released for quick. But, you know, for the time being on NA, you kind of have to look at what you got. I think if you're someone plan planning more for the eventual kit quick future, you can definitely um, use her and stuff. But if you have, like, an already solid all-arounder for it, when it comes to quick, then you're going to kind of be like, oh, I guess I don't really need her, which I think is the unfortunate this. All I'm saying here is that if you really like Karen, then you're going to go for Karen, and nothing I say is going to stop you, and it doesn't actually matter what she, uh, what she does. I still think there's ways to use her, so I'm not saying like she's outright bad. I'm just saying, like, hey, if you're someone who's going, like, I only want to summon for Karen if she's the absolute best thing for quick when it comes to AoE, and I don't think she's that. And if I'm wrong about that, then don't worry about it. Uh, I will gladly listen to someone tell me. I've been wrong in the past about this before, but I really don't see that much about Karen other than she's Karen. So, hmm, there you go. Good luck if you're going to be summoning for her, because I know that, I, trust me, I read a lot of the comments, and a lot of people were saying, I want Karen, give me Karen. When Karen shows up, I'm summoning for Karen. So for those people, good luck. I wish I could join you, but summer's right on the horizon, and I need to save for summer. And speaking of a unit, this is the one-time ultimate unit. It's Merlin, who is a caster. One quick, three arts, one buster. That's all he needs. First skill. Dreamlike Charisma A. Increased party's attack for three turns. Uh, charges party's MP gauge by 20%. The attack up is 20%. Second skill. Illusion A. Grants party invincibility for one turn. Increases party's critical star generation rate for one turn. Reduces all enemies' critical attack chance for three turns. 50% star rate. Crit chance is 20% down. And seven turn cooldown. Third skill. Increases own allies' buster performance rate for three turns. Increases their max HP for three turns. Increases their critical damage for one turn, 50% buster, 300, 300, 3000 HP, and the crit damage is 100% up. Cooldown is of 6. Territory creation A, item construction C, and mixed blood are his passive skills. His third skill is an anti-berserker attack damage aptitude, which is an increased attack against berserkers, and his noble phantasm, which is rank C currently and not the one from Nab Babylonia, which funny enough, they didn't give him this, which felt like it was them nerfing the character <laughs> who was really good in Babylonia because of this specific uh, NP. Well, not only because of this NP, but it's a really solid-ass NP, but they got rid of it. His Noble Phantasm is... 
uh, something something Avalon. The Garden of Avalon, Garden of Avalon, the forever sealed utopia, recovers party's HP every turn for five turns, charges party's MB gauge by 5% every turn for five turns. The HP regen is 1000 at level one and all the way at level five, it's 2000. And then it gains crit stars for every turn for five turns. Charge 100% at five, it's five crit stars. And if you get it all the way to the final charge level, it's 25 crits for five turns, 25 crits, 25 stars for five turns. Merlin, and then he also has a summer outfit. Oh, I forgot to mention, Karen has a really nice devil outfit, actually. Where? No, oh, right, y'all. Dom, 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 dom. There she is. Yeah. There it is. Nice costume. I think it's important to bring up costumes <laughs> when they happen. <laughs> Sometimes a costume is enough to make you go for a character. And Merlin has a really nice costume right here. Boom. Ma oh, that's right! I forgot Maeve has, like, multiple costumes! You're right, boy. I forgot. Maeve has multiple co She's got summer costume. She's got, uh, costume two, which is her idol costume. Wait, does she really only have two costumes? I thought she had way more. Okay, my bad. My bad, everyone. Two costumes is still a, a lot. We all can't be Nero and have like three costumes. Uh, uh, Merlin. Actually, before I begin, boy, do you have you heard anything about Karen being good? No, he's not. He's shaking his head. Feel free to tell us in the comments, everyone. I really would be curious to hear uh, from people who actually have Karen how she does. Uh, not in a way to insult her, actual genuine curiosity. <laughs> anyway, Merlin. This is a unit I know for a fact is good. So here's the thing. It's very hard to talk about Merlin, because there's no doubt that Merlin broke the game. The current Fago, it can't be the way current Fago is if it was not for the fact that Merlin completely broke the game. Uh, he was not the first to have this ability here, which is give an increase of allies buster performance for three turns. Technically speaking, I want to say... No, did, did Geronimo or Tomomo come out first? Geronimo has like a terrible version of this, which he only gives to himself for a single turn. 50% up either Buster, Quick, or Arts. Tomomo is the first support that kind of does this, where she gives 50% Arts to one ally uh, for three turns, but then she doesn't have anything that gives NP gauge at all. And you can see here, he was one of the kind of first to kind of give this. Waver has 50% MP gauge, but he doesn't have anything as major as uh, this right here, which is the increase of one ally's buster performance or arts or quick. But he does have the crit damage for sure. But either way, the confluence of stuff that around Merlin, which is having this increase of crit damage, which is 100%, which if you have two Merlins, it's 200%. Having this ability, which also increases their max HP, which is pretty nice because a lot of the times Buster is used to kill one enemy. So just make one dude stronger, but not stronger, but make him have more HP so they're harder to take down. And then also increase their Buster, which Buster already had like a really firm early ch choke hold on the game with a lot of good Buster units. This resulted in uh, the early Buster meta, aka maybe the most boring time in all of go. <laughs> Where you either had Merlin or you did not have Merlin and it was a bad time for a lot of people because a lot of the power creep that came after Merlin's was release was insane because even just using your friend's support Merlin was enough to completely break the game. I never pulled Merlin. I was never able to get him and I only use a support Merlin and even that was enough to completely carry me through a lot of very tough fights. He was just insane. He This man is the poster child for having an insane kit like this ability to just instantly give your party invincibility be able to support them with his noble phantasm i don't think a single unit i think they've avoided this since then actually until castoria <laughs> where scotty if you know if you look at scotty's abilities she has two really good ones but then her noble phantasm sucks all her skills are pretty solid and it, it does a lot of good but then a noble phantasm just isn't very good compared to merlin um 
if you look at Castoria, she has the full package. She has first skill, second skill, third skill, all good. And then her Noble Phantom is Phantasm, also extremely good. She has absolutely everything you could ask for. Um, actually, is Vich probably the same way? Oh, but Vich is more of an AoE, so it's a different kind of... It's She's not giving support, she's giving only attack. So it's kind of a little bit of a different thing. But what I'm trying to say here is, is that Merlin was the perfect package. He could give you whatever you wanted. Were you looking to stall? He could do that. Were you looking to end the game early? He can do that. Literally, you didn't even really have to use him with busters, to be honest. If you had a, some way to take advantage of his one-turn crit damage, you could, in theory, use that. It's just better to use it with buster, because the buster was 100% up, and if you weren't using that, it felt like a waste. But the point is, is that you could use him for a lot of stuff, and you could cheese out a lot of stuff. And there's no doubt in my mind that for the longest time, Merlin was the absolute best unit. You have him, and you were pretty solid. Now, what does that translate into today? It results in a unit that they never want to buff because they are afraid. <laughs> they are afraid of him ever being as good as he was at launch. And let me tell you, there have been plenty of people wanting Merlin to get a buff. Um, and it feels like they're actively saying, we don't want Merlin to be buffed ever. No Merlin should ever be buffed again. Because Oberon, who is the big bu who is a big buster support, actively says, if you're using Merlin, fuck you. We don't want you using Merlin. They don't want you using Merlin. They don't want Merlin to return to the top of the game. Hmm? It's only the one Merlin. It's only this Merlin. <laughs> it's specifically this Merlin they don't want seeing succeed ever again. And does that kind of hamper a lot of the fun that you can do with Merlin? I think that's a deeper question for you to look into. I think there can still be fun to be had with this Merlin. I don't think he's the best Buster support anymore. Even... For challenge quests, he probably still would be, yeah. Actually, you're right. For challenge quests, you would much rather have Merlin just because, like... Yeah, Oberon kills your attacker, and Vich kind of is only built for attack. So you still kind of want Merlin around for that. So unless you're less going for a very specific buster build where you're just like, okay, this doesn't have a break bar, and I'm just going to shoot... Oberon directly at the end game boss here. Merlin was still going to do you really solid for challenge stuff. But if you're just looking for like looping stuff and doing that kind of stuff, then Vich is 100% behind that. But Merlin will still be behind your back if you're doing challenge quest stuff. I think that's fair. Yeah. It's a good thing my brother reminded me of that because I was going to say there's really no reason to have Merlin. And <laughs> maybe that's coming from my specific plague. Uh, my, my specific playing of the game where I never had to really use Berlin and I had to just adapt without him. But not not to say that he isn't super good, because like I said, he is, without a shadow of a doubt, an extremely good unit. Just he can't compare to the most recent units because they came after him and they broke the game in a different way. And I think that the devs will never actually buff him because I don't think they ever want him to return to where he once was. And I think that's perfectly fine for a game to do that but at the same time maybe it's a little bit sad for the people who have merlin but you know it's a tough subject to kind of break around about whether or not merlin should be buffed i think it's maybe a deeper conversation that we can have right here i'm definitely of the mindset that you should never buff merlin until every other unit every single unit in the game is better than merlin then you can buff merlin but that's an unreasonable thing to ask because Merlin is an extremely popular character and well loved by many. <laughs> so, <laughs> kind of goes back to a little bit of a huh, it's a hard push and pull for sure. But yeah, that's it, everyone. That's the end of the video. Three very good units, three very popular characters, and three ones that uh, definitely are surprised to kind of come out of nowhere. And then also Tristan and Gowen, who are very good units as well, I would say. Uh, should you be summoning for this? Uh, probably not. I would say no. But if you're a big fan of Karen, Merlin, or Maeve, this is your best chance to get any of them. Because I don't think we get a Merlin banner for quite a while. Karen isn't back until Valentine's Day, and Maeve is story locked. So, unless you picked her with your ticket, in which case you have Maeve. But, Merlin comes back next year around what time? White Day? He'll be back for White Day, so... There is, if you're willing to save and wait, you can definitely wait on Merlin. But if you're someone who's already investing heavy into Buster Servants because you have Vich and Oberon, it would definitely be nice to have Merlin for challenge quests. Uh, I think he's still limited to just one, right, in challenge quests? 
I think specifically the rule that says you can't have two members of the same unit is because Merlin exists. Because Merlin was, during the, the Nero Fest where he came back, everyone just used double Merlin, and you never died, and you just dealt so much damage that the enemy disintegrated. So I think Merlin is the reason why we don't have that <laughs> that role, where you can only use a single version of a unit from now on. Um, hilarious. But anyway... Feel free to summon on this if you do. If you plan to summon, feel free to tell me. If you already summoned, tell me how you did. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out. Bye.